What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Um, I'm going to give you the first three things I think is the most important that I did in my life in order to ensure that I would never need or want for anything and my daughter would never need or want for anything. A lot of y'all call that generational wealth. Um, I just call it being smart and that I don't want to depend on the federal government in order to forgive my student loans. The first thing that I think is practical for people is to make sure that they remove the consumer debt. I've largely lived a life, especially when I went broke in 2008. And that was one of the benefic most beneficial times that's ever happened in my life. Um, a lot of people don't want to go through anything. And a lot of people like to say that, yo, um, I don't want to suffer and things like that. But I think suffering is what brings out the best in us, right? Um, back in 2008, I went broke. And the first thing I did was give up everything, right? I was not trying to keep those cars. And everybody was broke at the time, so I felt comfortable. I moved back into my mother's basement. I wasn't trying to keep all my cars. They got repossessed. I had nothing, absolutely nothing. And what that taught me was that I was able to survive or I was able to pivot. And it taught me to not keep up with the Joneses. I was making $118,000 when I got out of high school. Um, and that was in 2000. My brother had got me a phenomenal job. Um, but after that, very, very... Uh, shortly after that in 2008, which is, well, actually I went broke in like 2006, 2007. So I knew that the recession was here way before everybody else knew the recession was here. I seen that junk coming a mile away. Um, after that, I, you know, wind up going broke and I lost everything. So I was 26 years old and I had a baby on the way and I was married and I was moving back into my mother's basement. And so, you know, the lessons that I learned from going broke was that nobody cared about anything that I was going through. And so as a result, nobody was going to save me except for myself. Being broke teaches you a lot of lessons, right? Um, and I wasn't even actually broke. And I'm gonna add that caveat in there. I'm gonna give you the context um, on the second point, but I wasn't even actually broke, but being broke, uh, nobody cared because everybody when it was all said and done, all of the stuff that I had did and all of the cars that I had bought and flying all over the place and me and Rita living our best life prior to Rita quitting her job after she got pregnant. And, um, you know, it showed what I was really made of as a man because we had made an agreement that Rita was going to no longer work after she came, became pregnant because we didn't want the system raising our daughter and we was only going to have one and we was going to put everything we had into her. Now, I had promised myself that my daughter was going to have everything she needed in order to be successful. I was off to a really bad start because before she was even born, I was going through a 2008 recession and it was hard for me to find a job and all of this other type of stuff, right? So um, being broke was actually a blessing because it taught me life lessons that's lasted with me even to today because I don't worry about what everybody think. I don't worry about keeping up with people. I just really started spending money probably within the last, I don't know, four or five years, but I was willing to stay down long enough to actually benefit myself um, as far as making the strategic investments that would then improve my net worth, which leads me to the second thing. The second thing is um, I refused, absolutely positively refused to touch the, the, give me a second, let me take the tip you're welcome, bro. I absolutely refuse uh, to touch my nest egg that I had already started investing. One of the OGs inside of the plant, inside of the plant, when I first got my job. So a lot of you already know that my brother had got me a job inside of the plant. I was working 16 hours a day, seven days a week. And I was making a lot of money, and you know, being young with a lot of money early in life, especially considering that. Um, you know, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. My family had a lot of money at some points, but then we were still living in the ghetto. And when my family ran out of money, I was too young to even get a trust or inherit any of it or so on and so forth. Completely different conversation, right? But um, the OG had told me, Anton, put up at least a quarter of everything that you make. And so one of the ways in which I put up that money is that I invested in my 401k and I always maxed out and I never missed it because it was just never there, right? The money that I was putting up, I was so used to it not being there and it just wasn't a part of my life. And it didn't even matter because I was still close to making over $100,000, close to $100,000, even funding my 401k at the time, which just reduced my tax burden. So it was just a part of the game, right? 
That's A. He said put up a quarter of everything you make. So it was easy for me to A, fund my 401k, but B, make strategic investments and have investment money in these different companies, right? Every single time I go through the car wash, and I know a lot of y'all gonna say, Anton, why are you getting that car wash? You gotta mess up the paint job. I'm gonna tell you the same thing that I said inside of the Porsche. Man, I don't care nothing about these cars like that. These mugs are to be driven. It's not to be babied or anything like that, but I know the Mercedes emblem every single time is going to be crooked. So I'm gonna have to get out and adjust that, but that's okay, not a big deal. Um, to continue with the second point, um, I've always put up a lot of money, right? And even when everything went bad, let me adjust this symbol. Even when everything went bad, um, I never, ever touched that money. A lot of people, when they go through things, they think that that money is emergency money. And I'm telling you, and this is one of the biggest things that you guys are going to have to take into consideration when we having this conversation. Look, Mercedes emblem, every single time, crooked. Hang it to the side. You're going to realize that it's really not that big of a deal. You may do a little bit of suffering. You may, you may go through some things, but never, ever, ever touch the principal. Ever. I don't care. Go through it. Go and get multiple jobs. I went and got two jobs. Um, I moved back in my mom's basement. I didn't care about the consumer stuff. I didn't care about the cars. I didn't care about the repossessions or anything like that. I'll always be able to get some more cars. I'll always be able to get some more stuff. You know what I'm saying? The consumer stuff didn't mean anything. So I didn't let the stuff or, you know, trying to survive. I just did the, the very minimum that I needed to do in order to ensure that we had what we had in order to survive, right? I never touched the principal. I never cared about the principal. I never counted that money. I never uh, withdrew from my 401k or took a loan or any of that type of stuff. I always was fine with my current situation, which is one of the reasons why I don't really care about an emergency fund. All an emergency fund is you removing the money that you would usually have to invest in things that ultimately is going to grow and to turn you rich. You're taking money away from yourself and you're using it in order to make sure that you can survive. In reality, I think that we all overly spoil and we will be able to survive and you're just unwilling to make the sacrifices but you're trying to put on airs or you're trying to maintain a lifestyle. You're trying to do the things that's not in your best interest. And so you rob Peter to pay Paul. You rob yourself in order to pay the servicers of the debt. And I've seen so many people take out of their 401ks or take out of the investments that they had. And I'm like, yo, don't pull out. Don't pull out. Apple's going to be this. Microsoft's going to be this. Um, it was a lot of companies at the time because I had been studying and reading and staying down and, you know, really, really focusing on you know, making the strategic investments. And I refused, I absolutely refused to pull away from or pull out assets or remove money in order to take away from the assets um, in order to substantiate what it is that I need to do from a living perspective, right? Which brings me to point number three, because I was so down and because my living expenses was so low, even when I had started getting money again, I had graduated from college and I had went on to become a software engineer and I built my businesses and I've never depended on my my um, income at any of my jobs and I was still you know, taking advantage of the double match when I started working at the University of Michigan and all of this other type of stuff. That's a completely different um, set, of, set of things, right? Now, maybe I'll have a second video that documents how I was able to leverage a lot of that. Actually, that video is in the Patreon. I just dropped that video in the Patreon today. So shout out to my Patreon members. Uh, make sure y'all tap into that video. The best day to join a Patreon is today. But I, I dropped a video on the Patreon that broke down exactly how I was able to leverage corporate America and my um, education and stuff like that in order to really, really take advantage of um, my net worth and, and increasing my net worth. But um, the third thing is that I took advantage of what was happening in the economy, similar to what's happening today. A lot of the stocks are depressed. A lot of these companies are undervalued. Um, it's a bear market. And a lot of people are not leveraging their resources in order to take advantage of it. And they so busy trying to qualify for a mortgage and talking about inflation instead of lowering their lifestyle in order to be able to make the purchases that's going to explode later in life. Things have been devalued for a long time. The same way that it was in 2008, the same way that it happened in 2020 when everything happened, when everything hit. And um, people are not taking advantage. And so they so busy focused on today instead of focused on 10 and 15 years from now. And that junk is crazy to me. 
But it, back then, you know, once I started better working and then I started really, really getting money from my investments paying off and the companies that I had built and they were really, really successful, I didn't change my lifestyle at all. I never did anything different except for at some point, yeah, we had outgrew the basement because my daughter was getting bigger and so we wound up having to get our own place or whatever. But I never changed my lifestyle. I took every single dime that I had and I invested it to take advantage of what was going on in the real estate market and the stock market as far as these companies being undervalued at that time. And so, you know, I was able to leverage a lot of my monies and my resources because I was not trying to keep up with people that didn't care nothing about me. Stuff is cool, but stuff is cool when you have money to pay for stuff from the money that's already being invested, right? When you can incentivize yourself Right. If I can actually justify it from a business expense, which, which then allows me to write it off, then that is the thing that I should do. But I shouldn't just buy stuff just because I can afford the payment, because then you're removing your ability to really get rich. Three things. Actually, I gave you all way, way more than three. Make sure you all tap into the Patreon link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Again, I did drop a video on the Patreon today for y'all to really, really be able to leverage that in order to get successful. As a matter of fact, inside of the video, I even talked about how you can go to college for practically free and still get your bachelor's degree from a major university and how I did it after I graduated from community college. Listen, my way is the unconventional way. My way is the best way. It's not the way that's the most popular, but it's the way that you can actually use in order to be successful. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I take. I hope you're really taking this information that I give you because I'm not telling you this information based off of something that I think. I'm telling you based off of my real life experiences, all right? So again, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description. And then last but not least, if you need to get in touch with me, email me at antondaniels413 at gmail.com, antondaniels413 at gmail.com, and I'm gonna get you scheduled for a Zoom session or a personal call and we're going to get your life together. All right. I love you. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later.